Good morning and welcome to this Friday's edition of the International Space Station Update. The crew is bringing an end to their first full week as the Expedition 31 mission following the departure of their Expedition 30 crewmates late last week. Starting off on Monday this week, uh, Commander Kanyanko spent much of his day unloading items from the Progress 47 resupply craft, which has been docked to the piers compartment since April 22nd, along with uh, unloading all of that cargo. He was also updating the station's inventory management system, which is a uh, fairly complex uh, program on board the station to track and monitor where each and every single piece of cargo was located. Also doing some cargo work that day was Andre Kuipers, but he was working in the ATV-3 or the Eduardo Amaldi, another unmanned resupply craft that's currently docked to the aft portion of the Zvezda module, as you can see here. This is the European Space Agency's unmanned resupply craft. So he was unloading some more cargo from it, and along with that, he was working on a biological experiment called the Integrated Cardiovascular, setting up the monitoring system on his own person, which looks to study uh, any heart atrophy or the weakening of the heart muscle during these astronauts' long-duration exposure to microgravity. Also on Monday, Don Pettit was conducting some more vision tests with Robonaut, setting up a task board while robotics controllers on the ground work to uh, send commands to the robot as it worked through a few dexterous movements and also testing out its visual acuity. He was also working that day with the Biolab changing out a life support module. Biolab located in the Columbus mo uh, Laboratory, seen here, is used to perform different space biology experiments on things like microorganisms, uh, cells and tissue cultures, and also small plants and small invertebrates all to help scientists gain a better understanding of the effects of microgravity and space radiation on biological organisms. Also on Monday, not up in space, but down here on the ground, commercial company SpaceX conducted a successful hot fire of their Falcon 9 rocket. During this, SpaceX engineers ran through all the countdown processes as though it were an actual launch day, and the exercises ended with the firing of all nine Merlin engines all taking place at Space Launch Complex 40 down at the Cape Canaveral Air Force Station. Moving on to Tuesday, Commander Konyanko was doing some maintenance work throughout the Russian segment, cleaning some of the vent screens and replacing a few dust filters in the Zarya module and also the Rosviet module. He was also working with the Russian Matryoshka experiment, named after the famous Russian nested dolls and looks to uh, study the radiation doses that the astronauts are exposed to by placing a number of uh, sensors inside of a mannequin-sized uh, body and then all he was collecting the data from those sensors and then uh, transferring it to computers and down to scientists here on the ground. He also did uh, some more cargo transfers from that Progress 47 spacecraft and then Andre Kuipers was also doing some more cargo work on Tuesday, working in that ATV vehicle again. But along with that, he was doing some uh, very important robotics training on the station's robotic arm. Uh, he will be working alongside Don Pettit when the Dragon capsule begins its final approach to the International Space Station for docking later this month. And so he and Pettit were uh, doing some training simulations and exercises with that robotic arm to practice for their eventual grapple and docking. They'll reach out and grab the capsule and then dock it to the Earth-facing port of the Harmony module on board the station and will successfully complete the first uh, visit of a commercial vehicle to the station. And again, Don Pettit was working with Kuipers on Tuesday with that robotics training on the arm, but also doing some more Robonaut setups, setting up our uh, robotic crew member on board the station for another uh, round of visual acuity tests and actually conducted some of the first switch throws and button, push and button pushes on his task board, completing a fairly big milestone in the engineering test of this humanoid robot's dexterity, all the while being commanded from the Payload Operations Center in Marshall. Moving on to Wednesday, we had Alag Konyanko taking some electrical readings throughout the station using a scope meter checking for the different uh, amplitudes and voltages uh, on a number of different uh, instruments throughout uh, the Russian segment on board the station. It was also doing some maintenance on the Russian toilet system, replacing the urine receptacle and also the filter insert just to make sure it was still uh, performing in tip-top shape. 
as that is one of the more vital pieces of hardware for these astronauts on board the station. Meanwhile, Andre Kuipers was doing some uh, inventory work on the Human Research Facility supply kits and unloading some more cargo from that ATV-3 vehicle. He also uh, worked up, uh, he set up the SLAMD, or the Space Linear Acceleration Mass Measurement Device, which the astronauts use to take uh, body mass measurements on board the station. As things like a scale do not work in microgravity, they have these uh, things like SLAMD to use uh, basic f physics equations uh, using force and acceleration to measure their mass. He's also pre-packing some items that will be loaded onto that Dragon capsule uh, later on when it visits and will be brought back down to Earth. Those include things like experiment items and also hardware for eventual testing and repair back down here on the ground. He was also doing some uh, cleaning of the station's atmosphere revitalization system, cleaning out a few bacteria filters in nodes 1, 2, and 3 on the U.S. segment. Meanwhile, on Wednesday, Don Pettit spent pretty much his entire day on uh, some heavy experiment work, starting off with a binary colloidal alloy test, which is a fairly complex study that uses microscopic particles known as colloids as models for studying the fundamental physics of the liquid crystal phase. Also on Wednesday, Pettit was working with the BASS experiment, or the burning and suppression of solids. This is an investigation that examines the burning and extinction characteristics of a wide variety of fuel samples in microgravity and will help to guide strategies for extinguishing accidental fires in that microgravity environment and also contribute to combustion computational models used for uh, designing fire detection and suppression systems both up in space and down here on the ground. Along with that, he was relocating some of the emergency equipment on board the station in preparation for the upcoming arrival of the 30 Soyuz vehicle, which will carry the next three crew members to join this Expedition 31 crew, who on Wednesday were uh, flying from the Gagarin Cosmonaut Training Center in Star City, Russia, and departed that base and flew down to their launch site at the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan for their final launch pre pre-launch preparations. Those three seen here are Joseph Akaba, a NASA astronaut, and two Russian cosmonauts, Gennady Padalka and Sergei Revin, who are scheduled to launch up to the station coming up on May 14th. Moving on to Thursday, Kononenko was doing some uh, upgrades to software of three of the Russian laptops and continuing some of the work he was doing on the Russian toilet maintenance. He also transferred a few more items off of that Progress 47 resupply vehicle before doing some maintenance work on the Russian Electron system, which works to generate oxygen for the astronauts' breathing air on board the station. Meanwhile, on Thursday, Andre Kuiper set up the Ultrasound 2 device, which was used in uh, a couple of biomedical experiments on board the station on Thursday doing some ultrasounds on his own body for the integrated cardiovascular, doing, uh, which is looking to study, again, heart atrophy or the weakening of the heart muscle inside of astronauts over these long-duration space flights, and also taking some images of his uh, uh, veins and arms and his legs for the vessel imaging experiment, which looks to evaluate the changes in thickness and compliance of long-duration ISS crew members, both during and after their long-term exposure to microgravity. He was also working on the carbon dioxide removal assembly uh, alongside with Don Pettit, who's doing some of that work. They were replacing and uh, fixing up some of the air selector valves. And that carbon dioxide removal assembly, again, uh, Kuipers was doing some work, but also Don Pettit was as well. Uh, and he that is used to uh, scrub or remove excess carbon dioxide from the atmosphere on board the station as it, you need to uh, maintain a healthy breathing atmosphere for these astronauts as they're exhaling carbon dioxide into this closed uh, environment at all times. So that's just to keep our astronauts safe and breathing an oxygen-rich atmosphere. Also on Thursday, Pettit did his own integrated cardiovascular scan with that ultrasound and also took a, a health survey for the integrated immune, which looks to track any immune deficiencies that arise in these astronauts during their long-duration space flights, and also is setting up some hardware for testing today, which uh, will be used for the VO2 max experiment. 
Meanwhile, on Thursday, down here on the ground, those upcoming Expedition 31 crew members climbed into their Sokol launch and entry suits, which they will wear during uh, all of the launch activities inside their Soyuz TMA-04M spacecraft. And this was uh, the first of two fit check dress rehearsals to familiarize themselves with the vehicle, again, that they will launch upcoming here on May 14th. And that launch is scheduled to take place at 10.01 p.m. Central Time, 11.01 p.m. Eastern Time, just under two weeks from now. And again, we will have coverage here on NASA TV of all of those events. And that brings us up to today, Friday, where Ala Kanyanko is doing some cable audit and photography work in the uh, Mini Research Module 2, or the POISC module, and also taking some measurements of any interference inside of the POTOC air purification system inside of the Zvezda Service Module. Meanwhile, Andre Koifers is downloading a lot of that data that's been taken from the integrated cardiovascular experiment, and also setting up the Cubic 3 module. Cubic 3 is a small controlled temperature incubator or cooler that's used to study biological samples in this microgravity environment. Meanwhile, Don Pettit is working with that VO2 max uh, experiment that he was setting up hardware for yesterday. VO2 max looks to study the uh, maximum oxygen uptake and aerobic capacity of these astronauts, and measurements are taken both before, during, and after their space flights. He'll also be doing some checkout work on the Dragon Command and Control Panel, some of the more upcoming prep work for that flight uh, of the SpaceX Dragon capsule to the International Space Station. You can see some photos of that there, also known as the Cuckoo. So he'll be doing those checkouts. And a little bit later in this hour, he'll be uh, doing a, an interactive interview event with Fox News Radio and CBS News Radio, along with Andre Kuipers. So again, that'll take place later this hour, beginning at 10.55 a.m. Central Time, 11.55 a.m. Eastern. And then a few other items that the crew aren't uh, directly involved in. Uh, Padalka, Kavan, and Revan, who are down in the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan right now, participating in the traditional ceremony outside of their Cosmonaut Hotel crew quarters, and then are reviewing some rendezvous and docking procedures on their laptop simulators, as they prepare to begin for their flight to the International Space Station. And then earlier this morning, the thrusters on that ATV-3, or the Eduardo Amaldi transfer vehicle, fired for about 20 minutes and 21 seconds at 3.37 a.m. Central Time, and a reboost that placed the station at the correct altitude for the May 15th launch of that Soyuz TMA-04M spacecraft, which will carry Padaka, Akaba, and Revan, to the International Space Station. And then aside from all of that, some European flight controllers down here on the ground are going to prepare to reintegrate the prime chain of the REX system, REX standing for the Russian Equipment Control System, which had some uh, unexplained problems back on March 29th, just after the ATV-3 vehicle docked. But engineers believe that the chain is healthy based on some extensive analysis of all the data that was brought down they believe it will be um, put back online with no further issues. All of that activity is scheduled to take place around 1 p.m. Central Time later today.